Trackhouse has found their next Project 91 star. Casey Kane says he's considered returning to NASCAR, and it's finally here, folks. North Wilkesboro All-Star Weekend. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. On the road, as you can see, I'm back in the Tar Heel State, about uh, 40 minutes or so from North Wilkesboro Speedway. I'll be heading there tonight for practice and for the pit crew challenge. We'll talk about that at the end of this episode. But before we get to all the latest news, uh, we have to thank today's sponsor, this episode is sponsored by 1821 Man Made. 1821 Man Made offers top shelf grooming goods for the aspiring gentleman. Inspired by Prohibition era bootleggers, the 1821 Barrel House empowers men to be the gentleman they deep down aspire to be through professional grade grooming products and lifestyle wisdom. You'll love the smell of their three in one shower gel for beard, hair, and body. And be sure to try out their long lasting spirit spritzer, which is available in multiple luxurious scents. 1821 are big race fans, big fans of Out of the Groove. If you head to 1821manmade.com right now or click the top link down in the description below and use code 1821NASCAR at checkout, you'll get 25% off your order. Really appreciate 1821manmade for sponsoring the show. Again, head to 1821manmade.com. Use that code 1821NASCAR for 25% off. You can't beat that. Big news yesterday out of Trackhouse Racing, they have found their next Project 91 driver. And no, I'm sorry, it's still not Carl Edwards. Let me pause for just a moment. Everyone's talked about Carl Edwards this past week except me. I hate to sound like a party pooper, but I've never thought there was any chance Carl Edwards returned to NASCAR, even for a one-off. And that's still how I feel, however, I will say, I also didn't think we'd see Carl Edwards at a racetrack, talking to fans, signing autographs, doing interviews. We saw that this past weekend. I didn't think we'd see Carl Edwards in the TV booth, especially not so soon, and having a good time with it. We also saw that this past weekend. So, uh, as Carl Edwards said at Darlington, I was there in the crowd when he said it, there's no plans to race anything, but who knows? For the first time in a while, I think the Carl Edwards conspiracy theorists who believe he's gonna come back to NASCAR one day actually have some legs to stand on. I mean, there were reports that Edwards was at Trackhouse a few weeks or a few months ago. Just checking things out, not sure what that means. Obviously, he was just at a race, he was just on TV, so Carl Edwards is probably as close to a NASCAR return as he's been since his shocking retirement at the end of 2016. I still don't think he comes back to race, certainly not full-time, maybe a one-off, but I'm still a skeptic, a very healthy skeptic, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I just wanted to give my quick two cents on Carl Edwards. Back to the Trackhouse Project 91, their actual new driver. This one's been rumored for quite some time, but Shane Van Gisbergen, the three-time supercar champion, will travel across the Pacific Ocean to participate in the Chicago Street Race. This will be the third race for Project 91. Kimi Raikkonen has run the other two. This will be Shane Van Gisbergen's first NASCAR appearance. He said, quote, I can honestly say I have dreamed about an opportunity in NASCAR, but really never thought it would become a reality. I can't wait to get to the States to meet everyone and prepare for Chicago. It's NASCAR's first time on the streets of Chicago, so in some ways, everyone will be a rookie like me, but I don't underestimate that it's going to be a huge challenge. I don't have too much first-hand experience watching SVG race. I've obviously heard about him. I have seen him compete in NASCAR iRacing events. Some of them I've helped broadcast. He's won, I believe, a race that I helped broadcast on this channel. <laughs> but what I do know about him tells me that he could easily be competitive. Trackhouse is competitive equipment, and unlike Kimi Raikkonen, who came from open-wheel Formula One cars primarily, SVG is driven heavier stock car type vehicles on road courses before. So I could see his skills translating to a next gen car pretty quickly. He might be a little more comfortable than most. And like you said there, Chicago could be a complete disaster. There could be Star Cup Series drivers making fools of themselves out there. So Shane Van Gisbergen may stand out in a good way. I'm not gonna pick him to win, but I, I think he's a top 10 threat, no doubt in my mind. 
Shane Van Gisbergen, I believe, is from New Zealand, but obviously he races a ton in Australia. A known Australian NASCAR driver, you know, raced in NASCAR for a few years, Marcus Ambrose, uh, had this to say about Shane Van Gisbergen coming over. Ambrose said, quote, I'm sure he is going to have a great experience over there. He is going to really enjoy it, and I wish him the best of success. It's changed a lot since I was there, meaning NASCAR. It's more international than it ever has been as far as these guys coming in and out, like Jensen Button. So I think it's a bit easier for the guys to come in for one or two races than it used to be. That being said, just results make the difference. If you're fast, you get respect. If you're not fast, they'll get you out of the way in a hurry. Marcus Ambrose must have seen uh, the race at Circuit of the Americas earlier this year. But interesting, of course, Marcus Ambrose came over from Australia, won a couple of NASCAR Cup Series races, so I thought it was interesting to hear his thoughts, how he believes Shane Van Gisbergen will adapt. Ambrose said he thinks he's going to be good. He said Cup Series cars are gnarly to drive. I love that word. Sometimes I miss Marcus Ambrose. Uh, but good luck to Shane Van Gisbergen. Again, I don't have any like super hard predictions. I think he'll be good. I think he will adapt quicker than Kimi Raikkonen did. That's no disrespect to Raikkonen. And just, you know, he's an F1 driver. SVG has driven, I guess, more similar cars uh, in recent years, so I, I'd give him a great shot. Next story, I believe, came out yesterday, maybe even the day before, but it's kind of flown under the radar. Uh, Deb Williams, writing for Auto Week, shared some quotes from Casey Kane, where Casey Kane says he's considered returning to NASCAR. The first paragraph of the article reads, Casey Kane, who walked away from NASCAR Cup racing prior to the 2018 season's conclusion due to health issues, says he has thought about returning to the sanctioning body's premier series. Quote, I think it would be great to run a stock car again, Kane said. Very interesting comments from Casey Kane, who I believe is 43 years old. Uh, that would make him, I think, the second oldest driver, at least among full-time Cup Series drivers. Kevin Harvick's like 47, and then you have Hamlin, Truex, who are like 42, so Kane would kind of fit in with that group. And my point is he's not too old to race in NASCAR. He's not too old to race, period. Casey Kane's been driving sprint cars the last few years. I think he's full-time in the World of Outlaws this year, if I'm not mistaken. And he's also got at least one uh, SRX race on his calendar for this summer, so uh, yeah, Kane's going to drive something sort of like a stock car again soon. Casey Kane, uh, in this article, does address some of the health issues, the dehydration issues, that ultimately cut his NASCAR career short. Kane said, quote, I've done a lot better since then, and I think my body is in a much better place. It needed rest. I needed to understand the things that I've gone through. It was a long process. I feel the way I should feel, and that's nice. Very nice. Nice to hear that. Uh, I'm glad Casey Kane seems to be doing well. It was cool to see him, as well as many other recently retired or just NASCAR stars in general at Darlington. Again, he is 43 years old. Looks good. Uh, it would take some time to adjust, I'm sure, to the next-gen car. But I would welcome a, a Casey Kane return. Maybe not to the Cup Series. I mean, he, he could come back to the Cup Series if someone's willing to give him a seat. But Maybe something like trucks, maybe Xfinity. Trucks would be really cool. I still think it's crazy that Greg Biffle came out of nowhere a couple years ago, raced that KBM truck at Texas and just won. Like that, I feel like that was one of the wildest stories we're gonna look back on. Even now it's crazy, but 10 years from now we'll be like, Biffle, he was like out of the sport for five years. He was a truck series champion like 20 years earlier, just came back like he hadn't missed a beat. I could see Casey Kane potentially doing something very similar if he was in the right situation. <laughs> The whole theme of this episode is just recently retired stars, stars from our childhood, and weighing whether or not they're gonna make a NASCAR return. I guess nostalgia still sells. Anyway, great to hear from Casey Kane. I wish him nothing but the best. Speaking of nostalgia, God, this is this whole episode. Uh, North Wilkesboro is happening. <laughs> the NASCAR Cup Series returns after a nearly 30 year hiatus, 1996 was the final Cup Series race. It was dropped from the schedule to make way for mega tracks like Texas. Now, all these years later, ironically, uh, it's basically taking one of Texas's dates back. It's taking the all-star race that Texas had last year. Huh. Funny how things like that uh, work out. But North Wilkesboro is happening today in just a, a few hours. I don't know when you're watching, this might be happening right now. Uh, cars will be on track, Cup Series practice, Truck Series practice, and then tonight, a version of the Pit Crew Challenge returns. I'm just gonna give you my real quick basic predictions and preview. Uh, I think the racing, both tomorrow night during the heats and also Sunday during the main event, will be decent. I think it'll be a little better than Richmond. A lot has been made about the worn out surface that hasn't been repaved in decades. We've already seen this week with some of the late models on track, chunks of asphalt coming up and damaging cars. Hopefully that's been mostly worked out. The kinks have been settled. I know Wilkesboro SMI, they have equipment on standby to patch 
patch up any things that they need to, but uh, hopefully the surface holds up at least through this weekend. I think the racing will be good. I think it'll be slightly better than Richmond. And Richmond, at least on the long runs, in my opinion, was a fantastic race a few weeks ago. Tire wear is expected to be the name of the game. I think that favors veteran drivers who've have more experience with that sort of thing. I look at Martin Truex Jr. He's my pick to win. He's also a great short tracker. I think Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, uh, Brad Keselowski even. That's who I'm going with. You know, at the same time, even these drivers, Keselowski, Harvick, don't have any racing experience at North Wilkesboro Speedway. So perhaps the playing field is as even as it's ever been. You'll see young drivers like Ty Gibbs, who has to race his way in through the open. He could surprise us all. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports has been fantastic at short tracks this year. Kyle Larson could be great. Chase Elliott, this could be a chance for him to shine. William freaking Byron. We'll, we'll see. Perhaps the young drivers are triumphant this weekend, but going into it, my prediction is we'll see a lot of veterans up front towards the end. I'm really curious to see how the pit crew challenge goes tonight. I'm going to head to the track and watch it in person. I'm not sure if the in-person experience will be as good in this case as the at-home television experience. I love that the pit crews are involved. There's $100,000 on the line as well as this determines your starting lineup for the heats on Saturday. But as far as like, you know, a spectator event goes, I hope TV does a good job showing it off giving the viewer at home lots of different things to look at. They give them enough information to track. We'll see. Uh, I'll be there in person. I'm not sure how it's going to translate to the in-person experience, but I I'm excited to see the pit crews be involved once again. I love that this All-Star Weekend, by and large, is just simple. It's not 15 different stages during the race, the inverts, calculating average turners. There's none of that goofiness. There's just a couple of stages, a couple of tire requirements, pit crew challenges back. Again, nostalgia. Sweet, simple racing nostalgia. It's what this weekend, in a lot of ways, it's what this weekend is all about. I think we should all just have fun with it. I thought it was interesting, um, you know, Kevin Harvick is bringing back the 29 one final time. It's a throwback to his first ever start in the Cup Series, or I guess actually technically it's a throwback to his first ever win, which came just a few weeks into his career at Atlanta. I noticed some folks on social media were asking, hey, where's the little, you know, Dale Earnhardt 3 tribute on the door that was there for most of 2001? Kevin Harvick actually addressed this. He tweeted, for those asking about not having the three on the door top this weekend, it was not on the car for the Atlanta win in 2001. I asked for it to be put on the car a few weeks later. I actually did not know that. An interesting detail there uh, highlighted by Kevin Harvick. Look, obviously Kevin Harvick, his early career, you can't talk about it without also talking about Dale Earnhardt. That's just the truth. But at the same time, this scheme, this season, this tribute, it's about Kevin Harvick. I mean, Kevin Harvick created his own legacy. Not quite what Dale Earnhardt's was, but it still a pretty darn fantastic one. First ballot Hall of Famer, easy. The focus should primarily be on Kevin Harvick. No disrespect to Dale Earnhardt Sr. whatsoever. Um, cool to see this car, this number back one final time. I can't wait to go to the track and see it in person. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel and you love all things NASCAR, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for your very generous support. If you're coming to the race on Sunday, be sure to stop by the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail display outside the track at 3 p.m. I'll be stopping by. You can come say hi, chat racing for a few moments. But until then, I will be seeing y'all. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful weekend, folks. Enjoy North Wilkesboro.